Welcome GDLers, this is Bruce from Barking Dog BIM and today we'll get a brief introduction to GDL scripting. We'll go over some basic commands and concepts to get you started scripting your own parts. First steps, a handy toolbar to have open is your Edit GDL Library Parts toolbar. And make sure that under your work environment, model rebuild options, your interrupt with error messages is turned on. Open your GDL reference guide under help, documentation, GDL reference guide. That's for the PDF version. Or the online version is found at gdl.graphisoft.com and the reference guide. Both the PDF and the online guide are divided up the same way. You can see a general overview, GDL syntax, expressions and functions, and so on. So let's start a new object. It's either under File, Libraries and Objects, New Object, or it's this button here, New Object. I'll restore down using this button here. On a Mac, it's right click on the tab and choose Undock. We'll set our subtype, but in this case, we'll leave this as model element. And for this demonstration, we'll just leave the remaining fields as they are. Let's check our parameters. These are the default values, and we'll turn off show 2D hotspots in 3D. Leave the bottom level and top level as they are for now. These AC underscore parameters are what's known as fixed name parameters. They are reserved for use by ARCHICAD and each has its own special function. If you're interested in researching further, you can find a list of them towards the back of the help under miscellaneous fixed named optional parameters. And there's a whole list of them and what they do. Let's start scripting. Under the 3D script, we'll type in block 111. What is block? If we go to our help and look under 3D shapes, basic shapes, block, we'll see that block requires an A, a B, and a C. And with the diagram down here, we see that A is the dimension along the X axis, B, the Y, C, the Z. So this means that we will draw in a block one meter wide, one meter long, one meter high. Keep in mind that all length figures in GDL are in meters. Also, case generally doesn't matter in GDL. Uppercase or lowercase, GDL generally ignores case. So if we check our 3D view, we will see that we've drawn a block. One meter along the X, one meter along the Y, one meter along the Z. So we've generated a shape, but it's not parametric. So let's swap out these fixed dimensions for some parameters. So I'll just pop out this 3D window so I can refer to the parameter names whilst scripting at the same time. So I want A to be my X, I want B to be my Y, and I want ZZY, ZX to be my Z. So if we check our 3D, we'll see that nothing's changed because our default dimensions are still one meter, one meter, one meter. But if we were to change this to some different dimensions and check our 3D, there we go. We can see that our block has updated to suit our parameters. So now our part is parametric. We'll now save this object. I'll save it to an embedded library, but generally speaking, you should always save it to an external location. And the reason for that is if this file crashes, I've lost any work in the embedded libraries, but if I've saved it to an external library, that work is saved every time I save. Now let's go to our plan, select our object tool. We can see that our newly created object is pre-selected, ready for placement, and let's place it on the plan. But we see that there's nothing here. And the reason for that is we haven't scripted any 2D information yet. So if we go back to our 2D script and we type in a command, that is project two. What is project two? So let's go back to our help, have a look at 2D shapes, 3D projections in 2D. 
we'll see here that project2 requires a projection code, an angle, and a method. The projection code, down here you can see the different types. Well, we're after top view. So our projection code will be 3. An angle is the azimuth. Angle set in the 3D projection settings box. Well, that sounds a bit confusing. But let's just see what that is. 3D projection settings. Azimuth here is where the camera is located around the object. So we want it at 270. And the last is the method. We want hidden lines. So let's choose two. Project two, three, 270, two. Save our object. And there we go. Our object now has a 2D representation. We'll just have a little bit of an explore on what the different angles might achieve. So if we open our 2D view, which is generated from the 2D script, and we can check it as we go. Let's have a look at the projection code. Let's have a look at isometric axonometry, number seven. So if I change projection code to seven, have a look in my 2D view, you can see that it's changed to be an isometric. If I have a look at what shading might do, number three, let's change this to a three. We can see that that is now my 2D view. Check the plan. There we go, it's changed. So I'm in plan, but it looks like it's a 3D. You might be wondering what is the point of that? That comes in real handy when you are scheduling. You can say to this part, you are appearing in a schedule, so I want you to do this 2D view. We'll just change it back to the 3272, which is a standard 2D plan view. And there we go, that's what we're after. You also see that we have hotspots on this object, even though we didn't create any. They're on the bounding box corners and in the center of the bounding box. Now a note about automatic hotspots, if you don't create any, ArchiCAD will automatically create them at the bounding box corners and in the center of the bounding box. This is both in 2D and in 3D. Also because I've used the special inbuilt parameters of A, B, and ZZYZX to create the extents of my shape. These are also stretchable. ArchiCAD will recognize that they can be stretchable without any further programming. If I used any other parameters that I created myself to define this size, they would not be stretchable by default. Even though we have a 2D plan representation, it's not ideal to use the project2 command for the final result, as it's more processor demanding and when you get into rounded shapes, the representation isn't as smooth. To quickly demonstrate that, let's change this block command to a cylind command. Now, what is a cylind and how do I make it work? Go to the 3D shapes, basic shapes, cylind. We can see here that I require a height and a radius. So we'll comment out this block command so it doesn't interfere with what we're doing. I need a height, which will be ZZYZX, and a radius, which will be A divided by 2. Let's check our 3D view. And you can see that I've got a pancake here. It's not the right height. So I'll investigate my script and see what I've done. And I can see that I've mistyped this parameter. ZZYZX is what I need. That is the result I was looking for. So if I save that, check my 2D plan, you can see here that it's updated to accurately represent the model, but you can also see this segmentation around the curve. It's not a nice clean arc, and that's what we want in our 2D. So we'll go back to our 3D script, comment out our cylinder command, and bring our block back into play. We'll go to our 2D script, and use a rect2 command. Let's check what a rect2 command is. 2D shapes, drawing elements, rect2. You see that a rect2 requires an x1, y1, x2, y2, and the little diagram down here tells us what that means. So we want a rect2. We know that we start at 0, 0. 
and we end at A and B. A and B. So we'll save that. We've still got our Project 2 command turned on, so we can see if our 2D script matches our 3D projection. And there we go. It may not look like it, but we actually have our Rec2 command sitting on top of our 3D projection. To demonstrate that further, I'll comment out this Project2 command. And there we go. Now, although it doesn't look any different, this is now generating using proper 2D code. Let's add some 2D hotspots to see the effect. Let's say I want to add a hotspot halfway along the back edge of the block. So about here. In the 2D script, I use the command hotspot2. Once again, we'll refer to the help to see what that means. Hotspot 2 under 2D shapes drawing elements. And we see hotspot 2 requires an X and a Y. And the diagram here, X and Y in relation to the axes. And you can see a whole bunch of extra information. When you see square brackets like this, that means that this information is optional, depending on what you're using the hotspot command for. Items outside of the square brackets are required information. So let's look at our 2D script. We require an X. Now X will be halfway along. So that's A. So this will be A divided by 2. And B will be 0. So let's check our 2D view. We can see that our hotspot is there in the GDL environment with the 2D view. And the hotspots are represented with a little X. So let's save the result and have a look on our plan. There we go. We've got our hotspot halfway along our A. But you'll also see that the other hotspots have disappeared. And that's how the automatic hotspots work. If you've defined no hotspots, ArchiCAD will add those five hotspots for you around the bounding box and in the center. If you start to add hotspots, ArchiCAD will say, OK, you're dealing with the hotspots. I won't put any on. Now, there's two ways we can deal with this. One is we can go back to our details, compatibility options, and turn on hotspots on bounding box. If we save that and have a look, we can see that those five hotspots have reappeared and we still have the hotspot that we've added. However, the better practice option is to code them yourself, which gives you greater control over where they appear and how they behave. This is easy enough to do in this case. We will go back to our part, turn off hotspots on bounding box, go back to our 2D script, and we just need to add four hotspots to the corners and one to the center. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five. So just to visualize that, we've got our rectangle here. We've got our axes here. This is our zero, zero point. This side is B, and this side is A. So this corner in the X will be zero, and in the Y it will be B. This corner in the X axis will be A, and in the Y axis will be B, and this corner in the X axis will be A, and in the Y axis will be zero. And then this spot here will be halfway along the A and halfway along the B. First hotspot will be at 0, 0. Second hotspot will be at 0, B. Third will be at A, B. Fourth will be at A, 0. And the fifth will be halfway along A, halfway along B. Let's have a look. There we go, there's all our hotspots. What I've shown you are the very, very basics of scripting, but you've learned how to generate a 3D shape that's parametric. It has a corresponding 2D script and the hotspots where you need them. The GDL scripting environment is primitive and it hasn't changed in decades. It doesn't have all the sophisticated coding aids that other scripting editors have, so keep your help files handy. You will refer to them often. Having said that, the GDL editor is due for an update in ARCHICAD 
27, due out later this year, 2023. If you want to do some further reading, a great book to help you get started is the GDL Cookbook by David Nicholson Cole. It's quite dated now, so it doesn't have the commands that have been added in the last 15 years or so. However, the logic and structure of GDL hasn't changed, so it's a useful resource to make your start. Version 3 is available at this link, and version 4 is available at this link. I'll put both of those in the description. The other essential place for getting help is the Developer Community Forum. This is found at community.graphisoft.com and click on the Developer Hub Developer Forum. This forum is full of experienced veteran users who are more than willing to offer their help. Just make sure you have a clear subject line and take the time to phrase your questions clearly. The answers you get will only be as good as the questions you ask. This concludes our brief introduction to GDL scripting. In the next video, we'll go over the order of script execution and global versus local variables. See you there.